Do you ever find yourself judging and shaming your body during sex instead of enjoying what it feels like and really being present with your experience? You are definitely not alone if so. I'm Darshana Avila, your guide to all things erotic wholeness, and I am so glad to be with you talking about intimacy, pleasure, and ways that we can really liberate the power of eroticism in our lives and have more juicy and satisfying relationships. Be sure that you are subscribed to this channel so you don't miss out on any of the goodness that we're talking about here. So today it is body shame and the way that so many of us have really complicated relationships to our bodies and end up in our heads focused on what we think another person thinks of us or all of the judgments that we have about our own selves rather than really being present with the sensations in our body, the sweetness that we might be sharing with another and, and just relishing in the miracle truly that it is to have a sensitive, sensing, able body, or you might be differently abled and you're exploring whatever the capacities are of your particular body um, to really be available to the intimacy that you desire. So there is a lengthy conversation that we could have about why body shame exists and all of the cultural layers of that conditioning. But what I actually want to get right to is ways that you can help yourself to unwind from that. Because ultimately, when you feel more freedom, more acceptance, more peace within yourself, it is going to mean that your relationship quality is better. The physical intimacy that you experience is better. Um, the more you feel available to enjoy your body fully, exactly as it is, the more joy you will have. It's as simple as that. So I want to share some ways that I have learned that can really help to unwind from that body negative, um, fat shaming, thin shaming, color shaming, all the different ways that we judge and are judged to bring us back to a place of appreciating. One is to consider an idea of positive exposure therapy. If you are constantly being inundated with airbrushed and photoshopped and perfectly lighted images of what is beautiful and what a sexy body looks like, and that's not actually reflecting you to yourself, if it's not actually reflecting the range of bodies that exist in the world, I would invite you to consider changing up the media that you're consuming, changing up who you're following on Instagram, who you are taking guidance from, and who visually you are absorbing into your field day in and day out. So you actually do have a choice, maybe more choice than ever, because even though our dominant culture likes to shove a particular image of what is sexy, what is beautiful, what is attractive down our throats, there are so many people out there in the world who are taking a stand and saying, no, this is beautiful. Any shape, any size, any color, any age, I promise you, if you look for it, it's out there. So do yourself the kindness of being reflected back to yourself in ways that actually feel affirming and reminding yourself that there really is a wide range of what is sexy and what is beautiful out there in the world. Another really helpful thing, and this is, I'm going to speak directly from my experience, is if you have an opportunity to be around other naked bodies in a non-sexual context and to really get curious about, wow, bodies look like that, bodies move like that, and to see that our bodies are so unique and varied and different and far from the wrinkle-free, dimple-free, scar-free, again, airbrushed, photoshopped version of things, but really that what it is to be in this human meat suit um, can take on so many different appearances. That is such a powerful learning. Now, I happen to live in Northern California, and I'm surrounded by a very hippie-ish counterculture, and going to clothing optional hot springs is something that I have been doing for ages. That's an example of a space where I have really unwound a lot of my own body shame because I get to be around so many other bodies and just kind of like casually observing, oh, okay, there's that, there's the other. It's not about sexualizing or objectifying. To the contrary, it's really about normalizing the range of bodies that exist and just being in celebration of how incredible having a body is. Another way that you can do that that is more personal is you can put yourself in front of a mirror. You can do this as a solo practice or you could do this with a trusted friend or a partner or a lover. Adjust it to your comfort, adjust it to your reality. But being in front of a mirror and actually looking at yourself, 
really, really looking at yourself compassionately and intentionally. Many times our first focus is going to go right to, oh, there are my belly rolls. Oh, there is that scar. Oh, you know, I don't like the shape of my breasts. And you can notice that self-judgment. You can notice the parts, the way that you immediately hone in on what you perceive as wrong. But then you get to bring the power of your choice to it. And you could actually have, you have the choice to say, I'm sorry to that part of yourself that you've been shaming and judging. You have the choice to offer praise instead. And you can do that methodically, bit by bit by bit by bit of the body, moving from part to part to part, speaking words of praise, or simply looking with as much compassion as you can, maybe laying hands on different parts of your body, being intentional about bringing some care and some compassion to yourself, apologizing for the ways that you haven't done that, and making a commitment to be more honoring and accepting of yourself, this is a very powerful way to disentangle yourself from the conditioning of shame and body negativity um, that is so woven into our dominant culture. This is a surefire way, if you commit to these kinds of practices, to then feel more ease and joy and peace and aliveness in your own body. You're going to bring that to all levels of your relating and most especially to your physical and sexual intimacy. And who wouldn't want to feel more free, more easeful in those conditions and those circumstances? So I really hope that there was something here that felt inspiring and encouraging to you. Please tell me about it. Drop a comment here tune in for future videos and be on the lookout because often when I run group programs and workshops, we tend to these kind of themes together. So if you're interested in that, you should be sure to get on my news list and I will see you soon. All right, take care.